guys, hello, it's Ollie the Tea Guru here um, and I'm showcasing one of my new teas. Um, this one is Alo Mountain Yunnan Black Tea. And hopefully you saw the teaser I put out a few days ago. There's something very special about this tea. It really isn't um, like any other black tea, red tea uh, that I've tasted. Uh, let's take a look. So, wild, well picked Alo Mountain red tea, black tea. Beautiful, beautiful leaves. Um, now, when you hold your nose to the leaf, um, it is lovely and sweet. So, it's quite expressive in some respects, this black tea. Before I prepared some water, and because I need it 90 degrees, I'm not going to bother heating up the, the guy one. Beautiful colour. Quick rinse. Now, smell. Red currants. A little bit of mulled wine but more, more fruity, not so deep and dark as mulled wine. Just sort of think of red forest fruits. Um, I sold Alao Mountain a long time ago. Uh, it was standard stuff. Um, for the price point, it was really, really nice stuff. Um, and I have tasted this already, and the, um, the flavor profile is similar. But what was quite interesting about the Alo Mountain that I sold before is that, um, you know, back in those days, I wasn't selling much tea. I grabbed two kilos, and that two kilos of Alo uh, Mountain tea lasted me three, three and a half years before it all went. And um, black tea in general does change um, quite a lot over time. So the original Alo Mountain that I sold. <clears throat> started off very expressive red berries um, you know it wasn't a particularly um, artisan tea so it was quite thin um, fairly expressive flavor wise a little bit complex on its um, on its fruity notes but one and a half to two years in there was a real change to this tea um, the fruitiness disappeared um, and in its place and I can I you know the taste is here but I can't really describe it very well it was kind of <clears throat> camphor forest pine wood um, equally is interesting um, just very different if you put the two teas together you'd never know that one was two years older than the other so bye bye water right, we're going to do the first infusion now And black tea is very forgiving. You know, we've done tests on this before. We've done a YouTube video on it before. If you're a, a novice drinker, one thing you really don't need to worry about is black tea. You know, um, you can um, overbrew it. Well, you can try to overbrew it, but it's very hard to. Um, it's not really a problem. Let's give it a whirl. So the interesting thing about this tea um, is that the frontal flavors are very low, very, very um, elegant. Of course, it's gonna be smooth, right? Um, smooth black teas are, are not cheap. Uh, this is lovely, smooth, pure tasting. It just tastes pure, uh, proper wild tea. But the interesting thing about this tea is that although there isn't much on the front, you get a little bit of minerality. Like you get the, maybe the tartness of the red currants. You don't really get the sweetness. But what you do get is the alpha taste build up and build up and build up. So you don't taste much on the front, but, we, but you do get a really pleasant aftertaste. So 
one, this is a really good tea for uh, black tea aficionados. It's also really good tea for pu'er drinkers because you know us uh, sheng heads, we're, we're used to this, right? Maybe you won't get much at the front, but the aftertaste. You, know, you get a good aftertaste in a, in a pu'er, you know, it's, it's really up a lot of people's street. So first infusion. Very light, very elegant. You may wonder, like I did, uh, what's going on with this tea? <laughs> this is, you know, why is Ollie pushing this tea out? Just wait. <laughs> you know you're drinking good tea when the liquor just glides down the throat. Effortlessly. It just tastes so pure. It's as if your body is saying to you, uh, this is good, give me more, deliver more to my body. <laughs> There's no tartness. There's no mouth pucker. There is just promotion of salivation and quite a lot. It really is. Um, it, it is really wonderful structurally, this tea. All right, round two. Infusion two, you've got more, a little bit more frontal flavour. The sweetness stays with you throughout. So even when you're not drinking, you've just got this veil of sweetness. After the first, first infusion, or during the first infusion, you've got this sweetness just hanging on the palate. That will improve. Yeah, this really does remind me of um, of the, the old Eilau mountain that I sold before. And we're talking, it's over five years ago now. <clears throat> Six, maybe seven years ago. Maybe eight, actually. <laughs> but I still remember the profile really well. And um, and yeah, this is, this, is, this is it. But this is a much more elegant, much more top-end version. Just the... Structured, beautiful, mouthfeel, bouncy, liquid, pure liquidity going down your throat. Just good stuff. Thinking about it more closely now, as the, the frontal flavors are building and the wonderful sort of veil of sweet berryness that's left around your palate, um, <clears throat> this taste wise is. is similar to a white tea, a good white tea, you know, with those berry notes. <coughs> the, the structure is just more hong cha. But there is some sort of, there is some crossover there, flavor wise. This is not a robust number. Um, this is elegant um, and yet a full mouthfeel That's good. This tea hasn't even opened up yet. It's still got something to give. This is, uh, I had four infusions now, uh, but just to look at the, the leaves, you know. Wow. <laughs> it reminds me of uh, high mountain uh, Ta Taiwanese stuff, you know, the huge leaves. Beautiful stuff, look at that. So guys, an absolutely stunning red tea that I'm so happy to be able to share with you guys. Very confident if you put this up against the cheaper stuff, you know, yeah, it's three times less money, but you put this up against it, you know where your money's going. It's just, um, it's just a really good black tea. <laughs> Enough said. Until next time, guys.